Hello. Ooh, hello, Franny. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it is Holly, and I am back to talk about the books and statistics for books that I read in quarter one of 2024. Free me. Why are you throwing my notes on the floor? That's not nice. Um, I am still in the process of rearranging my library, so it's actually pretty chaotic right now. Um, but it's getting better. I have like a decent amount of open shelves, which is good. So, um, yes, I don't know. Okay, so let's get into it. So since I don't do monthly wrap ups and I'm not going to go over all of the books that I read, like in detail or anything, I'm just going to talk about statistics and then talk about a few books I want to like draw attention to, I guess. Um, and I'll try to put up um, screenshots from my reading spreadsheet. I am technically behind in my Goodreads goal and I will tell you it's <clears throat> like April 6th I think and I have yet to finish a book this month at all. I've been in like a really weird headspace all week. I don't know I'm hoping to finish a book this weekend so we'll see. I don't know. Oh is there a battle about to start happening? Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, so in the first quarter of 2024, I finished 22 books. Sort of. I count DNFs as finished. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you for... Oh, if you hear things, it's because... <clears throat> if you hear anything, it's the cats playing. Uh, anyway, so 22 books. So in January, I read nine. In February, I read seven. And in March, I read six. Um, some of the things I track are like how it is published, so traditional versus self slash indie. So I think this is a pretty good split. It's 54% traditional and 46% self-published. And then the source is actually, there are so many things that are divided into three and they are all 976. It's so weird. Um, so source, I have six from Kindle Unlimited, seven from my library, and nine that are bought. So those are books that were like already on my shelf or I bought them this year, um, which I have not bought a lot of books. I did post a book haul. When it comes to format, nine of them were ebooks, which is kind of crazy. Seven audio and six physical. Um, I've been ebook, it's I think a mix of like my library and Kindle Unlimited. When it comes to ratings, I had zero one stars, one two star, four three stars, seven four stars, six five stars, and I had four DNFs. Um, and for something to classify as a DNF for me, I have to get like fairly well into it, like 20, 25%. If it's within like the first 10%, I'm not going to count it as a DNF. I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, and it's usually also a book that I don't plan on ever coming back to. So occasionally I'll drop a book because I'm just not feeling it right now. Um, but I intend to pick it up again at some point. Those I don't count as DNFs. Oh, quick. Um, like I said, I did a book haul. I bought seven books. I read four of them either previously or since then. And one book got unhauled, um, that I had purchased. Technically, I mean, I purchased it, but it was a fairy loop book. So, um, then now let's talk about some books that I want to like highlight, talk about, that kind of stuff. So, um, two of these are going to be like series. So the first is The Bridge Kingdom and The Trader Queen. I read these pretty early on in the year and I will tell you, they were exactly what I needed. Um, the Bridge Kingdom in particular gave me so much joy and like, the feeling like a reminder of why I love reading. I've been in like the last year I've really struggled to read and I do think part of that is Murphy. I think it's just there's a lot of <laughs> like chaos in my life. I think I'm just generally a little down, perhaps depressed. Um, but I was starting to like kind of wonder and fear like am I not a reader anymore like I don't feel like the pull to read a lot of times and when I'm reading a lot of books like I had four DNFs I don't know if I've ever had four DNFs in a year and I had four in one quarter 
and to some extent I think that's a good thing it's I'm not forcing myself to read things that are just gonna be mediocre or really disappointing to me it's still kind of sad and I start to wonder like is it me like does <laughs> like am I picking bad books do I not enjoy reading anymore is this not what I love and then I read I read the bridge kingdom and I had read Stolen Songbird and I think I gave it like three or four stars. I liked it, but I never really felt the need to keep going. And this book just really restored my faith in myself. <laughs> so, and it was like, I don't know. I think I had kind of low expectations for it going into it. And I don't know if that was part of it. And I still really loved The Traitor Queen. I do want to continue the series. I know it follows a different couple. I have them out on KU, but I just keep like putting it off. I think I'm like half afraid to not like it, half afraid it's going to suck me in. So like I've been reading most of my ebooks at work and so I can't like just keep reading at work. Um, and then also there will be another duology, which I'm very interested in from what I have read so far, but they will come out on audio first. And so I won't be able to read them because they're Audible exclusives and I don't think I'm going to pay for them or anything because I did cancel my Audible to save money. So I'll have to like wait until like 2025 to read them. But I really enjoyed those. Um, I am excited about Danielle L. Johnson's newest book, but I don't, I'm trying not to spend money. So I think I'm going to not buy it. Um, I don't know. But I just, I, oh, I just really loved this story. I thought it was beautiful. Um, next was Ruthless Vows, which I was hoping to read um, before 2023 ended, but I did not. So I read it in early 2024. And I was kind of scared to read it because I was one of those people that really loved Divine Rivals. And um, I was just like, what is going to happen? And this book just, oh my gosh, it gave me so much anxiety. Like it was such a rough read, but it was so good. This whole, both of these books are five stars. I have another Rebecca Ross book on my TBR from a book box. Um, I think it's a couple years old because I think that's an Owl Crate book and I canceled Owl Crate a while ago. Um, and I'm really excited to pick it up now, um, because I really liked her writing. I see some of the, like, the things people say about Divine Rivals that are, like, flaws. Listen, I see it. Do I think it's insta-love? Yes. Do I care? No. It works in this story. So I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then last is, we're on like a fantasy role right now, apparently. Um, although I feel like Ruthless Vows is like very minimal fantasy. Um, is the only reason I'm saying these two books and not all three is because I read the first one in 2023. And that is Defend the Dawn and Destroy the Day, the second and third slash final book in the Defy the Night trilogy by Bridget Kemmerer. <sighs> five stars. Five out of five. All three books all amazing. Um, so good. Oh, the second book gave me like, oh my gosh, I feel like I was so close to having a panic attack during these books. Like Bridget, the crap you put <laughs> these characters through. Oh my God. <clears throat> I had so much anxiety and I was just like, I was so like the emotional turmoil between some of these characters heartbreaking devastating it felt so real some of these characters so I will say um some of these characters especially I think Korik and Tessa who are like kind of your main characters especially in the beginning but you get a lot of other POVs that come in and everything make some really bad decisions especially when it comes to their relationship and I could see some people being bothered by that and like it is frustrating it is incredibly frustrating but I think it is also very realistic especially for the lives that both of these characters have lived individually and like you as the reader you're just like but you guys like just just be happy together just just like live your lives but there's so much going on around them their backstory like what has formed them into who they are as people like I think that those decisions that they made are realistic for who they are 
as frustrating as they are, they are real choices and I think real people would make them. Um, and then Destroy the Day was just, I cried. It was beautiful. I, I mean, I have enjoyed everything I have read by Bridget Kemmerer. I, I think I said this in my book haul. I am one of those people that really enjoyed all of the Curse Breakers series. I enjoyed the second book and the third book. I thought it was a great trilogy. I have liked Forging Silver into Stars. I, I can't wait for that series to continue on. Um, I So I have really enjoyed her writing. I think she's an auto by author for me. And I think from what I have read, this is her best work. I think that this trilogy is like criminally underrated. Um, it's just so, uh, it's so beautiful. You have so many characters and like you want to be with all of them, like every character. And she did like a thing on her Instagram and um, it was like, you know, like how people like tag tropes and stuff. And one of them was like enemies to bros. I'm not going to go into detail about who care like which characters she is referring to, but that is probably, especially in Destroy the Day, my favorite relationship in the series. <laughs> like it is so well done and it was just like so emotionally powerful to me. I think, I don't know, for some reason I have always been drawn to male friendships. I just think that like, like female friendships are amazing. I love them but I feel like I'm exposed to them a lot more and so just seeing like male friendships it just hits I, like I just love a good male friendship and like this one like the payoff the like to get there the journey mm. I did think that this series had some things in common with the bridge kingdom um in like the best possible way so yes those are all my notes um, I'm, while well, I am a little behind and I'm still in like a weird reading place, um, I'm really happy overall with my reading, with what I'm doing, and I'm happy I'm still having like really good books in my life and I'm just going to keep going and keep reading when I want to read and, um, trying to produce content, but who knows when and how things will be. Um, I'm also trying to buy a house, so things are a little chaotic right now. I also have a trip in April, a trip in May, and a trip in August, so it's a crazy time of year. It's a crazy time of life, um, so yes, uh, but thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!